Hello, this is Daniel King reporting on round two of the London Chess Classic. It's been a really long day here in London. All four games went on for, well, well beyond the 40 moves. Um, and tough day for all the players. Um, let me start with the crunch encounter between Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces here against Levon Aronian. Aronian sat to pawn quite early on in the game and somehow managed to get some compensation. And But Carlsen began to turn the game around in his inimitable style. He's got so much patience, so much determination. But in this position, both players still felt that black was okay if Aronian played rook b2 in this position. Now the idea is that after h5, black plays Bishop c2, very nice move, as my friend Fritz is pointing out, there is a threat to the pawn on a2. So white has to deal with this by playing knight to c3, covering the pawn. And here there's a kind of funny kind of stalemate position that arises, where it's very hard for white to do anything, uh, but it's also very hard for black to do anything. If black simply waits in that position, maybe plays king d8, then um, I think the position will probably end in a draw. But Aronian missed this possibility and played rook to b1. And now Carlsen really starts to gain control on the king side. Aronian underestimated this plan of playing the pawn to f5 to shut in the bishop on h7. Now Aronian was relying on this move f5, but he really underestimated the play. My friend Fritz seems to be pointing out there's a, a threat here. <laughs> We're going to have to put up with that. Okay, and now the idea is for black to play bishop g8 takes d5. Aronian was relying on this, but in fact, well, it, it, this plan simply isn't good enough. And, you know, there are, there are often mating threats against against black's king this is this is the problem this pawn on c6 is really coming into its own and the pawn on f5 is vulnerable so let's see what happened rook h1 well this is very, it's still very very sharp position because very often black can gain counterplay by hassling the king but okay it seems like white is is taking control thank you my friend fritz is pointing out that knight takes h1 is a threat so rook h3 played threatening the knight so the king comes across to defend the knight. And the threat, as again my friend Fritz points out, is king g2 to break the pin. And then we'll be able to play g6 and, excuse me, we'll to play g6 and then take on f5 after the pin is broken. So, okay, Aronian took and then played this move g6, which is, oh golly, it's so ugly. Um, I mean, really, well, Fritz points out that that uh, g takes h5 is some kind of threat, but actually, um, well, positionally this is just disgusting. Um, the bishop is dead. Rook e2 is a great move. Um, threatening a rook e8 mate, so the king has to come across. Carlsen took on g6, and then rook e6. Threatening the bishop comes back to hit the rook, but now an excellent move from Carlsen, g6 is a winning move, threatening the bishop. If the bishop takes the rook, then we can play pawn takes bishop. And this is a winning position. Um, let me see, let's, let's uh, well, for example, if king e7, then g7 is um, queening. And if rook back, then we play g7 and knight takes f5 and you can see that well black has absolutely no moves in this position um, the king can come up and threaten the rook or the king could even come across and take the a pawn and then queen this one um, completely winning position so therefore Aronian couldn't take the rook had to come back with the bishop g7 um, it, it's all over in this position um, if, for example, rook h2, then we can take on f5, threatening rook f6. Thank you, Fritz, for pointing that out. So in this position, this is simply winning. Rook f8, mate is threatened, and that's the end of the game. So Aronian tried f4. We'll, we'll see the tricky point of this move. It doesn't quite work, but, okay, um, Carlson took. 
rook h2, and now knight f5. This is a winning move. Aronian took it. Still, still has to. Ha you still have to calculate this out precisely. Rook f6, threatening rook f8 and mate. So rook e2 only move. Uh, but in this position, actually, Aronian resigned. Well, why did he resign? Well, let's let's take a look at this. The rook has to come back, and now the point is that knight takes d6 is a winning move. Of course, this has to be taken. C7 check. This has to be taken, otherwise white exchanges and queens. Rook e8. Now a2. Now you still have to play precisely here, but okay, it is completely winning. So we have to stop the a-pawn. Black takes on d5. Now, if the king were to wander up the board um, to, to try to support the g-pawn, then black's king would come to support the a-pawn. And this is problematic, but the simplest way is just to bring the king back. And the point is that, well, let's continue the variation a little bit further. King b5, king c3, and the king comes over, the rook comes over, we take the a-pawn, and then that's completely winning, of course. Just sack back the exchange. So Carlson, with sheer determination and great skill, managed to defeat Aronian. And, well, I didn't mention yesterday that Carlson has now overtaken this magical number of 2851, the highest ELO rating ever. Now, I asked Carlson about this after the game, and he said, well, you know, well, let's, let's wait until the end of the tournament. But I said, well, is this significant to you? Do you know, do you, does this matter to you? And he said, well, yeah, I think it would. It would be, you know, something. He would like that. So it's interesting. He takes note of this. Okay, let's take a look at the other games. Um, not in too much detail because they were very, very long indeed. Um, so let's just find the next game. Just bear with me a moment. Let's have a look at, um, Polgar against Jones. You did Polgar against Garwin Jones. Now, this was such a tough game. Um, let's join the position round about here. Basically, it was a dragon variation where Garwin Jones sacrificed the pawn very early on and always had sort of vague compensation because Polgar's king was, was a bit insecure. And you can see that Black's king, on the other hand, is very safe. But Polgar had managed to advance this b-pawn and things were looking critical, but let's see what happened. You can see the king is still insecure. This is the problem. Um, but, you know, Polgar is advancing this pawn. Garwin Jones manages to snatch lots of pawns. Now, the question is, can Polgar manage to hassle this rook? and force this pawn home. King h7, very good move. That means that there's going to be no check on the back rank um, if the pawn manages to queen. Um, so that might help with perpetuals. But have a look. This queen stays active and just stays in the middle of the board. And it's simply not possible for white's queen to come in and, and get that rook. But let's see how the game ended. So Polgar makes one desperate bid, trying to protect everything and advancing the king up the board, if the king can get to a, to a7 to hassle the rook, that will be something else. But watch the trick that uh, Jones produces here. He finds, well, just before king a7 comes, rook a8 check, forcing a perpetual. So pawn takes, very nicely spotted. The king has to come back. And now queen d5, and in this position they agree to draw, they're just repeating moves. Okay, well, let's just go back a moment. Why does white have to repeat this position? Well, the point is if the king comes back, then we have we have nice sound effects from Fritz, that's nice. Forgot to turn it off before I started. Uh, queen c5 check will pick up the rook, um, and well then black is actually winning, so that's why it was, it was a draw. Okay, so that was a well, that game was uh, 73 moves. Very, very hard game indeed. Um, Nakamura Kramnik uh, was, let me see, that went to 87 moves. Um, basically, Kramnik was always slightly better in this game. Nakamura tried a very dubious opening. It's a very long game because they reached 
a queen and pawn ending. Oh my goodness. Uh, with one pawn up. Now, you can play forever in this position. The problem for Nakamura is that this c-pawn is vulnerable. If it's protected, if he wants to protect it, then that puts his queen completely offside, and then it's possible for black to advance on the king side. Nakamura decided to let the pawn go and stay active with his queen. However, once this c-pawn goes, he's now two pawns down, and this was too much for the American champion. Um, this pawn eventually went home. As I said, you know, black can play forever in this kind of position. Nice technique from Kramnik. He's uh, centralizing his queen, so the queen controls as many squares as possible. And finally, this pawn was forced home. Well, with mates of th threats of mate, um, but yeah, the pawn eventually came home. Let's just see the end. And well, in that position, um, Nakamura resigned. Black's king is going to be able to escape perpetual. So Kramnik also has two out of two. Made has made a, a strong start. Let's just deal with the final game, which was Anand McShane, which went to let's see how many moves it went to 108 moves. And if you don't mind. I'm not going to play through all 108 moves. I'm just going to go from this position. McShane had a great position, but Anand fought so hard and managed to reach a drawn rook and pawn ending finally. This is a theoretical draw. Basically, the king is on the short side. That's important. So the king can't be hassled. And the rook is as active as possible, so it's got checking distance. And this is a theoretical draw. Um, so they're repeating the position, let's just see this. And this is important, the rook goes to the back rank. By this stage, Anand was, was playing all these moves instantly. If f2, then the king can come back. King g2, and that holds the draw. Um, Luke tried for a little bit, king f2. But let's see, rook a8, still, still staying as active as possible. Problem is, when the king moves away, then the king moves in and everything is fine um, and the king the, the, excuse me the rook is able to hassle either from this way or that way and, and black's king can't find shelter here and this doesn't help either um, again the rook is threatening to hassle the king from the side uh, and in this position they finally agree to draw so there we are a very very tough round for all the players the games were so long so there we go, all to play for, but um, after two rounds, Carlson is on two out of two, Kramnik is on two out of two. Thanks for watching. See you for another roundup show soon.